Long haul train travel is a foreign concept to most people, especially in the United States. But we spent a month traveling across the country and back only using Amtrak trains and we learned a lot along the way. In this video, we're going to give you the breakdown of what food and drinks are like on Amtrak trains when you're sitting in coach class and what you are and are not allowed to bring with you. Phoebe. And I'm Adam. We're the couple behind In the Great Wide, and we spent a month, like we said, traveling across the country and back using Amtrak's USA Rail Passes. We took 10 train rides all over the country, um, and it was all in coach. Uh, food is not included in coach, but it is included for the sleeper car passengers. Although, those tickets cost way more, like three to six times more if you're traveling alone. So coach is definitely more economical, even once you consider that food and drinks are included with the higher price tag. Yeah, the food they serve for sleeper car passengers is almost always reheated food, like probably mm. frozen meals kind of thing. Um, so it's not like it's restaurant quality anyway. Yeah, however, some of the train rides can be really long. Our shortest train ride was four hours and our longest was 46. Mm. Yeah. It's a long time to be on a train. That's almost two days. It for those of you not good at math. Almost two days. Uh, um, obviously for the shorter train rides, food isn't really an issue, uh, but when you've booked your Amtrak train trip in coach class like we did, um, and you're gonna be on the train for multiple meals, what do you do? Well, every train has a cafe car. Uh, menus vary by route. We'll get to some specific examples in just a second. Uh, but this can get expensive um, and honestly kind of boring uh, if you're buying every meal in the cafe car. Um, because again, these are just reheated foods. There's no like, kitchen on board. Now you are allowed to bring your own food on board. However, Amtrak cannot store or prepare any food you bring as per health department rules. And there are no self-serve facilities. Yeah, so this means that there is no refrigerator and no way for you to reheat food that you bring with you. Uh, so you need to bring stuff that either won't go bad or stuff that you're going to eat within a few hours before it does go bad. For example, we always stopped by a local market or at least a sandwich shop uh, before we got on the train for a grab and go item to take with us for our first and sometimes second meal depending on timing. Yeah, uh, this could be a prepackaged sandwich or salad, um, which practically every supermarket offers in yeah. some form. Yeah, even if you buy it from like Subway or a different sandwich shop, something at the station before you get on the train, a lot of the stations have uh, cafes in them or diners and whatever that you can yeah. buy stuff or, or just like uh, convenience, convenience stores. stores. Yeah. Uh, if you do that, it'll still be fresher, better, and most likely cheaper than what you can buy on the train at the cafe car. Yeah, um, and for those long train rides, and we're talking like more than a day. 46 hours. <laughs> we would also pick up stuff that we that would be uh, shelf stable uh, without refrigeration, such as cured meats. You know, there are some salamis that don't mm. need to be refrigerated, uh, along with crackers and chips. Uh, granola bars, protein bars, um, nuts or trail mix, and like beef jerky um, to make sure that we had some protein. Yeah, at least this way you won't be forced to spend money in the cafe car when you get hungry. Uh, we also saw one or two people bring a tiny cooler on board as one of their carry-on items, which we thought was super smart. Yeah, Amtrak's luggage policy is very generous. Um, you can watch our other video to learn more about that. Um, but after our trip, we actually got a collapsible cooler bag from Coleman uh, to use as a beer cooler for while we're camping. Um, and something like that would work perfectly for Amtrak rides. You don't, it doesn't need to be huge. Uh, you could even, if you really wanted to, it could even be like a, a something you'd take to work, like a, a, a small, like one or two meal, mm -hmm. like little, little box. Lunch bag. Lunch bag. There yeah. You go. But like it's, but a, a regular soft cooler, something that you can collapse down after you finish empty your stuff. Empty out. Yeah. After you empty it out. So yeah. all you really need is a few freezer packs, which are, are not terribly expensive. So, you know, and, yeah. and making then I'll, sure they're cold. Yeah. It'll help keep your food cold and keep it from going bad. Yeah. Um, but as far as what food they offer in the cafe car, 
Um, like we said, specific menus uh, vary by route, but the national menu, the most commonly one, um, for breakfast, they have a breakfast sandwich, like bagels, egg bites, muffins, oatmeal, that kind of stuff. Um, but we didn't usually get breakfast from the cafe car. Uh, we just ate granola bars or something like that instead. Yeah, you can expect to pay like three fifty for a muffin or six dollars for a breakfast sandwich. So like just getting a box of like six granola bars was way cheaper in the long run. Um, yeah, and it f fills you up just as much. I, I the thing, one thing to remember is that you're on a train. You're not expending as many calories, so you need to eat as much as you re as you think. Yeah. Um. So it's like you know you can get away with having a granola bar for breakfast. Yeah. Um. The specific prices also vary by route, mm. along with the specific menu yeah. items. Um. So don't get too attached to one thing or another, but in general, yeah, they have muffins and bagels and breakfast sandwiches and stuff like that. Not every line has donut holes, and it's a shame. It is, it's sad and silly. <laughs> For lunch and dinner, they have like cold sandwiches and salads, plus some hot meals like burgers, hot dogs, grilled cheese, stromboli, and a cup of noodles, which was a very popular choice. I think it's because it was probably the cheapest Thing the cup of menu. noodles, yeah. It was hot and it was pretty cheap. So, but I don't know how many times I saw people cups of noodles. Yeah. Uh, but again, everything's microwaved. Mm. This is not restaurant quality food. Think of like you going to like a, a convenience store and heating up a burger or something. Um, it's not bad. I like. I tried the burger and it's not bad. You know. Yeah, and I had the hot dog. It was an all beef hot dog because usually I'm really weirded out by hot dogs, yeah. but. I was like, okay, whatever, this will do. It gets the job done. I wouldn't call it good. And I definitely would not eat it more than one meal. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, if it, you know, I wouldn't, for that 46 hour trip, if I ate more than one burger during that time, I would not be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you can expect to pay five to nine dollars for most of the entrees, um, except for the cup of noodles, I think is like two or three bucks it or something like, like two that. And a half, I think. Yeah. yeah it's so. Three, yeah. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of how much you'll be spending on those things, it's the, definitely better to take, yeah. take other stuff with you on the train if you can. They also have a variety of snacks like cheese and crackers, veggies with hummus, trail mix, candies, cookies, chips. Everything's individually packaged, mm -hmm. uh, the candies and the cookies and the chips and everything. Um, we had the hummus a few times yeah. and, and it was fine. Yeah, you know, it, we just needed something a little more fresh than some of the like chips yeah. and things that we had brought with us. So we got hummus and it it satisfied that craving. The snacks range in price from two to seven dollars. Yeah, on, on what you're buying. Uh, and food for sleeper car passengers. Again, all meals are included. Um, and some trains have what's called flexible dining, uh, which is the reheated food, like what we mentioned uh, earlier. But most of the cross-country trains, like the really long ones, the really long routes, have what's called traditional dining. Yeah. Uh, where they, Amtrak says they serve chef-prepared meals, uh, and they definitely look better from what I've seen. Um, just think of it like a low-level diner quality. Yeah, uh, pretty much, except for the auto train in the east, all the western routes do the traditional dining. So anything that has the, the double-decker. Uh, because mm -hmm. they do have a dedicated dining car. Uh, pretty much everything on the other side is the flexible dining, which the only benefit of that is that you don't have to actually have a reservation like you mm -hmm. do with a sleeper car uh, on something like on California the traditional... Zephyr. Like yeah. on the traditional dining, yeah. Uh, you do get complimentary room service mm -hmm. as well, so that's nice. In the sleeper cars you do. Yes. Yeah. Um, but coach passengers cannot purchase any of these meals from the flexible dining or traditional dining yeah. uh, menus. This is something that was really confusing for me when I was doing research um, to plan our trip because I thought, oh, we'll just be able to buy these meals a la carte and then take them back to our seats in coach since we're not allowed in the dining car. Um, but that is not the case. Um, the cafe car is the only option for coach passengers. Coach passengers are also not allowed in the dining car, only the cafe car. Uh, they're very strict about this. Yeah. So I don't think you can just sneak in and get a meal, uh, especially in the traditional dining. Like, they know exactly who's coming and exactly when they're coming. Yeah. So it's not like you can, 
think that you're going to get away with it because you won't. Yeah. Um, and on the double-decker trains, like the California Zephyr, the Empire Builder, or the Coast Starlight, um, the cafe car is the same as the observation car. It's the observation on top and the cafe car on the bottom. Um, and the stairs going up and down are mm. narrow. They're very narrow and they're kind of steep. Uh, so just be careful while, while you're traversing those stairs, especially while the train is moving. Uh, everyone has access to the observation car and the cafe car, regardless of where you're sitting. So you'll get to meet some of the sleeper car people uh, like we did. Got to mm -hmm. hang out with some of them. It was nice. Ironically enough, a lot of the people from the sleeper cars come hang out with the observation cars. They don't actually hang out in their rooms. Uh, which I thought was interesting, but um, but because the price tag is so much more to yeah, have I, a, your own private space and I would be sitting in my room the entire time and never talk to anyone. <laughs> I paid for it. <laughs> um, but the observation slash cafe car is was always located um, at the front of the coach section on the double decker trains. Uh, so if you're sitting in coach, all you have to do is move forward in the direction of travel on the upper level, of course. Um, and you'll find it. Yeah, it, it, it usually goes from the back of the train to be coach, however number of cars, the observation car slash cafe car, the dining car, and then the sleeper cars, and then the engine. Yeah. Um, that's the way it is on all the double-decker double trains. Yeah, but the single-level trains, uh, they may differ slightly just because mm. most of them don't have sleeper cars and roomettes. Uh, so there, it's only like coach and sometimes business class. So the cafe car may be in the middle of the train. Um, so, and there are no observation cars on the single level trains. So in this case, if you are confused, just ask an attendant walking by because they do walk by fairly frequently, yeah. um, which way it is to the cafe car and they'll be happy to tell you. Uh, some of the trains even have signs on one end of each car telling you this way to the cafe car or something to that effect. Uh, just so that people know where to go. Not all of them do, but some of them do. Yeah. Uh, so leave any questions you still have about food on Amtrak trains down in the comments. And while you're there, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you are finding it helpful. Now for drinks. Drinks. Uh, alcohol is sold on board and you're technically not supposed to bring your own, which we definitely did not do. No, of course we didn't. You are we, would, <laughs> we would never do that. No. You are allowed to bring your own non-alcoholic drinks, and you can then ask the cafe car attendant for a cup of ice at no charge. Yeah, um, I also did this with hot tea in the mornings uh, and got a cup of hot water from the cafe car because it made a huge difference for me uh, to be able to have the specific teas that I like instead of the generic stuff that they had to offer there. Yeah. Um, so that was... That made a huge difference for me in the mornings on the train to be able to have my tea, you know. Taking your own non-alcoholic beverages like this will save you around $3 per drink on the train. So it's not bad, like the drinks aren't crazy expensive, but it can really add up if you're doing a really long trip like we did. Yeah. Um, and also keep in mind that the cafe car attendants accept tips. Uh, so take a few bucks to tip them with, uh, especially if you're regularly asking them for cups of ice or something like that that you're not being charged for. If you're in a sleeper car, you can bring on your own alcohol, but you can only drink it in your room. <clears throat> Meaning not the observation car, the cafe car, or the dining car. Um, but you do get sleeper car passengers. They get one complimentary alcoholic drink with dinner uh, in the dining car or with room service. Drinks from the cafe car include uh, the non-alcoholic side, soda, juices, energy drinks, coffee, tea, and bottled water. And then for alcohol, they have a limited selection of beer, wine, and hard seltzers, uh, as well as many bottles of liquor, and even a couple of like little cans or bottles of pre-made cocktails. Uh, specific selection varies by route, but you can view sample menus for each route on Amtrak's website. Yeah, and as far as water on the train, um, bottled water is for sale in the cafe car, um, but that's not your only option. Uh, there are water stations in the coach cars uh, where you can fill up a small water bottle, um, but our water bottles are pretty large. Uh, we take them with us everywhere, uh, so they were really hard to fill up at these stations because the gap to put your water bottle in was only like this big, and it, ours are bigger than that, so we had to It was, we would angle them in, and yeah. inevitably water would come down, and then I would spend a lot of time cleaning things up. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> 
they do sometimes provide uh, small cups at their water stations as well, but it's not always. So just definitely bring your own refillable water bottle and you can find those stations at the top of the stairs in the coach cars. We thought the water tasted fine, but not everybody did. Some people had more distinctive palates, I guess, and didn't appreciate it. Uh, but we, we drink filtered tap water at home and it tasted fine to yeah. us. But if you're picky, just bring your own bottled water because one bottle from the cafe car will cost 2 to $3, depending on which route you're on. Um, and then they have fancier bottles of water that yeah. are even more expensive. Yeah. Some cafe cars also sell what they call a comfort kit that includes a blow-up neck pillow, an eye mask, earplugs, and a blanket, along with a pouch to put everything in. They, uh, they didn't have them for sale during our month-long trip uh, because of COVID restrictions, um, but we recommend bringing your own stuff anyway. The luggage policy is very generous with Amtrak, so yeah. really the only reason why you should be buying that stuff is if you just forgot something. Yeah, if you didn't have it or didn't think about it, and it's like, oh yeah, of course, you know, a neck pillow would be great, which it is, and you should get one and bring it with you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want an example of what we did for a full two-day meal plan on the train, um, head to the first link in the description to see our full blog article on our website. While you're over there, sign up for our newsletter to get updates from us with money-saving travel tips and to hear all about our adventures from all over the world. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. We'll see you in the great wide somewhere.